Herzlich willkommen beim Arbor Verlag. Ich habe heute ähm, die äh, Gelegenheit, ähm, mit Paddy Whipfler zu sprechen, die dieses wunderbare Buch geschrieben hat, Hand in Hand, ähm, auf das wir ähm, im Verlag sehr stolz sind, im Programm zu haben. Herzlich willkommen, Paddy Whipfler. Vielen Dank. Sehr <lacht> gerne. Es freut mich, hier zu sein. Sie sprechen Deutsch. Ja, ein bisschen. Deutsch. Um äh, dich, Paddy, genauer vorzustellen, ist es ähm, interessant, dass du schon 40 Jahre ähm, mit Eltern arbeitest ähm, und deinen Ansatz weiterentwickelt hast. Deine Organisation heißt Hand in Hand Parenting, ähm, die einen sehr wirksamen Ansatz zur Stärkung ähm, der Verbindung von Eltern und Kindern, also der äh, Verbindung innerhalb der Familie ähm, geschaffen hat. Ähm, darum geht es auch in deinem Buch, das in mehrere Sprachen übersetzt worden ist und das sich schon über 700.000 Mal verkauft hat. Zu Recht würde ich sagen, deine Kollegin Laura Markham beschreibt das Buch als Page Turner, als Buch, das man schier nicht aus der Hand legen kann. Ähm, ich kann das unterstreichen. Ähm, es gibt viele spannende ähm, Ansätze, Denkanstöße und auch praktische Tipps und Beispiele, wie wir innerhalb der Familie, wie wir auch in emotional herausfordernden Situationen ähm, uns miteinander und mit unseren Kindern verbinden können. Und das kommt, äh, das führt mich zu meiner ersten Frage. Wenn ich 40 Jahre höre, 40 Jahre Arbeit mit Eltern und Familien, gibt es da, also hat sich da viel verändert oder hast du im Prinzip mit den gleichen Herausforderungen zu tun, vor die sich Eltern gestellt sehen, bei der vielleicht schönsten, aber auch ja, eben herausforderndsten Aufgabe, die es überhaupt geben kann? Um, there are several things that have changed, I think, in 40 years. Um, I tried raising my children with the principles that I've written in this book. We kind of uncovered them slowly, a group of parents and I. And, um, and back then, we had a lot of time. We didn't have a lot of money, but we had a lot of time. Um, work was not, I mean, Basically today, I think parents are expected to work more than 40 hours a week in many jobs. Um, people have to work overtime in order to earn a, a decent living. In the United States, in general, both parents have to work. And 40 years ago, one parent working was sufficient to earn enough money to, you know, have a place to live and food on the table. And Time is really important in raising children. It's not the most important thing, but it's very high on the list. So parents are under time stress all the time. In a way, we are all time poor. And I think the other thing that has changed is that in some ways, um, parents understand how to support one another better now than they did then. Now, when a parent has a difficult time, their friends will organize to bring food over, to take care of the children. It's like in, in many communities, there is a lot of mutual help that parents can offer one another when times are hard. And I think that those traditions were not as firmly in place um, back when my children were little as they are now. So that, that's one thing that heads in a better direction um, now than before. And I think the third change is that fathers are much more involved these days than they were 40 years ago. Um, they, they come to the child's birth, they um, do more of the play with children, um, they really do take more, a fuller part in building the relationships in the family, um, I think, if they have the time to do that. And that's, that's a wonderful pro piece of progress. 
Die Zeitknappheit, das, das würde ich auch sofort unterstreichen, die begegnet einem an, an jeder Ecke. Ähm, viele äußere Faktoren, ähm, die das Zusammenleben in der Familie sehr herausfordernd machen. Was ist es ähm, zusätzlich, und das ist vielleicht das äh, Zeitlose, das, das Klassische, was ähm, macht das Elternsein im Inneren mit uns? Wie verändert es uns auf, einem, auf einer inneren Ebene, ähm, die uns zeitweilig so sehr anstrengen kann, die uns die, größ die größten Glücksgefühle, aber auch äh, die größte Hilflosigkeit äh, bescheren kann? Ja. Yeah. I think one of the obstacles that is unseen, unnoticed, it's almost invisible, is the way that our memories of childhood and the feelings that go with those memories um, create uh, clouds on the lens of our ability to see our children. For instance, if a father was um, born too early and had to be in neonatal intensive care as a baby, then when he grows and has a, has a newborn, um, it's very likely that some negative feeling of, I can't, I, I, you know, just some negative feeling that makes him draw away from the baby rather than, you know, draw towards the baby, um, is a reflection of how difficult his very first weeks and months were. And the feelings of isolation, the feelings of something terribly wrong has happened and I don't know how to get out of it, the feelings of helplessness that little ones have when they're born sick and unable to thrive um, without help, all of those feelings then get transferred onto the baby and become um, an impediment in the relationship. For example, one mother I know felt very close to her daughter and felt like she was just, she really enjoyed parenting all the way up until her daughter turned 14. And the, as soon as her daughter turned 14, she just felt like she didn't understand her anymore and she didn't know what to say to her and she, she just lost her sense of how to connect with her daughter and it really bothered her. And so she and her daughter were now not in good communication. And I just asked her one day, we, we, we listened to one another in hand in hand parenting in order to help notice where the feelings might be coming from and to offload the emotional upset that they bring forward. And so in a listening time, I just said, you know, what was happening to you when you turned 14? And she just looked at me and burst into tears. And she just said, oh, no wonder. You know, my mother committed suicide when I was 14 and I found her body. And that was the end of me having a mom. And she just cried and cried and cried. And then she did several more listening times over the next couple of weeks. And by the time she had cried again about her mother's death and how alone she was at 14, she felt like she knew her daughter again and she could connect. It's like the, you know, the, the haze lifted and she was now interacting with her daughter instead of interacting with her own past. Da, um dieses, dieses, äh, der Prozess und dieser ganz besondere Zugang zum Zuhören, der macht für mich, und der Originaltitel deines Buches ähm, im Englischen ist auch Listen, ähm, ist, ist, ist für mich der, der Schlüssel des, des Programms ähm, überhaupt. Ähm, da komme ich auch noch drauf zurück, möchte ich gerne ausführlich darauf zurückkommen. Zuvor wollte ich auf den Untertitel äh, des Buches eingehen. Der heißt auf Deutsch ähm, Fünf einfache Strategien durch die Höhen und Tiefen des Elternseins und ähm, Simple Tools ähm, auf Englisch. Das Wort simple, das Wort einfach beschäftigt mich in diesem Fall, denn ähm, alle, die die Eltern sind, wissen, ähm, wir empfinden es manchmal als hochkomplex oder wahrscheinlich die meiste Zeit als 
hochkomplex. Jetzt kommt Paddy und sagt, es gibt ganz einfache Strategien und Werkzeuge, um mit den Herausforderungen klarzukommen. Eins davon ist zuhören. Ist es wirklich so einfach, Paddy? That's a good question. Um, the tools are very simple, um, but doing them is not simple because we have lots of feelings about our children, their behavior, and our behavior as parents. Um, so emotions are really what complicates parenting. Our children's upsets because the jam is just falling off of their toast and they want us to fix it you know and we just have no idea why they are crying about such a tiny thing and because we don't understand what's going on our feelings come up and we get frustrated or angry or just have to turn and walk away because otherwise we would yell that that's the complicated part is what emotions our children bring to life um, as they try things and you know encounter disappointments and difficulties and how we feel as we encounter situations that we don't understand or can't fix the the simple part is just a, a couple of very important understandings that are not clear in the general culture first Human beings function at their best. They are warm, they're cooperative, they solve problems well, they learn beautifully when they feel close and connected and safe. So for example, our children have big tantrums in the middle of the, the market because we were thinking about many other things on our way to the market. We had to find our boots, we had to find our keys, we had to make a list, we had to feed the cat, and we had to get on, you know, get to the market, and we were, we got disconnected. And they then can't function well. They then need to have a tantrum or need to have a cry because getting disconnected hurts on the inside. The second simple idea is that in order to recover their sense of being close and connected and safe with us, children need to offload the bad feelings that came from getting disconnected. And they, so when children cry, when children have a tantrum, when children laugh hard and long, um, when children are offloading fear, they tremble and they struggle and they perspire. When those things are happening, if a parent can pay attention, if a parent can be warm and supportive of the child's emotions, those emotions are um, heal the hurt. It's like you listen to the hurt, the child pours it out. You listen, they pour it out. You listen, they pour it out. And in the end, they feel very close to you. They feel you've treated them beautifully and well. They feel your love. And then they're very cooperative and they think better and function better. That's a new insight that's very useful. It's very simple, but once you get it, it changes your response to children and your own stress is lowered because every time your child cries, you don't feel like you're a failure. And the third simple insider principle that is simple um, and changes how, how we feel as parents, it makes us more powerful parents, is that parents need to feel connected too. And we have lots and lots of feelings about every single day. We have lots of feelings about how our children wake up, what they eat for breakfast, you know, how long it takes them to get ready to go to school or daycare, lots of feelings about what they do when they come home, lots of feelings about helping them with their homework. It's like every single interaction with our children has emotions attached to it for us. And if we can find someone who will listen to us and let us offload tension, and then we can help that parent offload tension, if we can exchange listening time and emotional support, Parenting gets better. We are more able to love our children well, 
more of the time because we have a place for all of those negative feelings that come up every day. And, it, and we also are helping the other parent. So we both get help and give help and learn, in, in a way, we learn how good we are as parents. We learn how hard we try. And it's very reassuring to be able to connect in that way with another parent. Das Wunderschöne an, an deinem Ansatz ist, ähm, die, ähm, mit den Gefühlen zu arbeiten und nicht äh, gegen oder sie ausräumen zu wollen oder korrigieren zu wollen. Das, das, ähm, das spricht bestimmt die 700.000 Leser ganz besonders an und, und Leserinnen. Ähm, ist also das Zuhören, ähm, je mehr ich dir zuhöre, desto mehr verstehe ich es als egal wie, ob einen einfachen oder komplexen oder ganz magischen Raum, ähm, die also magische Art, einen Raum für diese Gefühle zu schaffen. Yes. Um, we have, we come into this world with an instinct to heal from hurt. And we come with the physical ability to heal from hurt. You know, if you scratch yourself and you bleed, you don't really have to think about it. You just have to clean the cut and it, your body automatically heals it. And when we feel hurt inside, um, it helps to have a listener to show warmth and show their faith that we are good, even though we, we need to cry and be really, really upset about the thing that happened. If they can keep thinking, this is a good person, this is a person I love, I'm going to support them while they get over this hurt, you know, so that that person is calm and confident and caring. That caring pours in and our intelligence knows how to make use of it once the bad feelings are out. It's really just an understanding of a process that we all possess and that can help us think more clearly. It's like when we're clouded with upset, oh, I'm not a good parent, my child isn't doing their homework, I don't, we fight about this every night, I don't know what to do. Uh, uh, you take that to someone, you clear out all the bad feelings, then you come back and you can kind of sit relaxedly with your child and go, hmm, I think you know how to do that. And then they can cry about how they don't know how to do that, move the bad feelings out of the way, and their intelligence comes back into full force. And they just look at it and go, oh, I think I know, you know, and do it, and then walk off having done the homework. We see this over and over and over again. And uh, it's, it, human beings are deeply, deeply intelligent from the first moment they're born. And when you show faith in that intelligence by listening to feelings, it really makes life a whole lot easier all around. We know what to do and how to help. It doesn't look very active, but it is very powerful. Und über all dem ähm, hat Paddy ja auch noch den besten und direktesten Draht ähm, zum Innersten der Kinder beschrieben in ihrem Buch. Das ist nämlich das Spiel. Element, ähm, dass äh, die Qualität des, des Spiels ähm, in diese Tools, in die Strategien zu bringen. Ähm, da gibt es zum Beispiel, wenn wir über Zuhören sprechen, ähm, den Begriff des Playlistening, was die äh, sehr tolle deutsche Übersetzerin des Buches Annette Seifert als ganz Ohrspiel übersetzt hat. Ähm, Frage am Paddy, wäre das ganze Familienleben oder vielleicht das ganze Leben einfacher, wenn wir es spielerischer, wenn wir es als Spiel betrachten würden? Oh, yes. <lacht> we, we all need to play. Um, play really, it uses all of the brain. It's a very creative and very spontaneous way to use our intelligence. It uses our social emotional intelligence. It uses our practical intelligence. It uses good judgment. It's very, and, and we, it lifts people's spirits when they can play. 
And for parents, it's so rewarding when you know how to help you help elicit laughter in your child so that they are w fully delighted to be with you. Mm -hmm. And you see this delight and then you're laughing too and you're fully delighted to be with them. You know, when you can have those kinds of times every day, um, it makes us feel wonderful as parents. And the, the secret to eliciting laughter is for the grown-up to take the less powerful role. So if you're chasing your child, you barely catch them by the, by the edge of their shirt, and then they run a little faster and, you, and, and they get away. Um, if you're trying to, um, you know, you're giving them a horsey ride and they're trying to get off of your, you know, they're trying to stick onto your back and you're trying to buck them off, you know, you just keep trying and trying and, oh my gosh, you are so sticky. What am I going to do with you? Oh my gosh, how do I get you off? And they laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh. And this allows children to feel powerful and smart and capable when we play the don't know what's going on and the weak and the you know the incapable um it it boosts their confidence helps them feel very close to us and um i don't know it's just a really fun way to be and it slowly but surely builds leadership in children when we play with them that way Jetzt, ähm, eigentlich hatte ich mich auch noch sehr für das Thema der Grenzen ähm, interessiert, ähm, worüber Paddy auch ein, ein höchst spannendes Kapitel geschrieben hat. Aber wir sind in einer Stimmung der Grenzenlosigkeit, der überbordenden Freude. Ich glaube, ich empfehle für die Grenzen lieber das Kapitel im Buch und komme zu meiner ähm, ein bisschen persönlichen Abschlussfrage. Patty, was war das, ähm, an welches Feedback erinnerst du dich am liebsten? Was ist so eine Art ähm, Lieblingsfeedback, ähm, was du von Menschen bekommen hast, mit denen du Familienarbeit gemacht hast? Zum einen, und was ist das größte Kompliment, das ähm, deine eigenen Kinder dir je gegeben haben? Oh, good. Okay. I will just say that limits are very, very important. We need to set limits early with our children. We need to set limits often with our children. So we have these fun, crazy, almost limitless play times. And then other times when we set the limit and then listen to children, it's very important. Um, and as far as feedback, um, there are several families of children who were very deeply hurt very early in their lives. Either they were in, spent a year in an orphanage that was very poorly run before the parent adopted them, or they had very big medical difficulties early and that frightened the children deeply. And those parents have told me that we saved their lives um, as a parent that without the listening tools, um, they would have had, their relationship with their child would have gotten worse and worse and worse as the child showed the emotional damage from those early hard times. So that's, and, and yeah. And from my own children, uh, it's not what they say, it's what they do. I have two sons and they have been really <clears throat> lovely fathers. They've been emotionally very supportive of their children. Um, they've been the emotional center of their children's lives. Um, and they have, they play so beautifully. It's just such a deep pleasure to watch them play with creativity and joy and just good sense and I don't know it's just the deepest pleasure of my life to watch my sons play they're really really good with children their own and other people's mm -hmm. so. also sind auch diese beiden um, wie Patty ich finde es einfach so schön in ihrem Buch nennt sie um, 
Eltern ähm, sind für sie Action Heroes. Ich ähm, habe das für mich selbst als Superhelden, also erstmal ganz bescheiden als Superhelden übersetzt, aber auch als Helden und Heldinnen der Tatkraft, der, äh, der Hinwendung, der Liebe, der Fürsorge. Und das ist ähm, das passt für mich sehr schön und sehr bestärkend zusammen. Ähm, ich ähm, möchte mich dafür bedanken und für die 100 anderen ähm, wunderbaren Anregungen in ähm, Hand in Hand ähm, und, und lege es allen sehr stark ans Herz und bedanke mich an dieser Stelle bei Paddy und bei Ihnen, bei euch, äh, die zugehört haben. Vielen Dank. Ja, yeah. thank you so much for uh, your good work um, and everyone else at Arbor for Log. Thank you. Thanks, Christina. Danke, Paddy.